The development of the atomic bomb stands as one of the most significant scientific and technological achievements in human history. Led by a team of brilliant scientists, including J. Robert Oppenheimer, the Manhattan Project successfully harnessed the power of nuclear fission, resulting in the creation of the first atomic bombs. But even amidst the wartime urgency in pursuit of victory, Oppenheimer and others harbored concerns about the implications of this new weapon. Join Facts First as we present the terrifying but true story of the world's first atomic bomb. Important Moments in Its Development the study of radioactivity by scientists such as Ernest Rutherford, Niels Bohr, Pierre and Marie Curie, and Albert Einstein laid the groundwork for understanding the behavior of atoms and the potential for atomic energy. Then, in the 1930s, nuclear scientists, including Enrico Fermi and Leo Szilard, explored the concept of splitting an atom of uranium with a neutron, a process known as nuclear fission. This discovery paved the way for the development of atomic weapons. In 1939, Albert Einstein and Leo Szilard wrote a letter to President Franklin Roosevelt, warning about the possibility of Germany developing an atomic bomb and recommending that the U.S. accelerate its own research in this area. In response to the letter, the famous, or perhaps infamous, Manhattan Project was established in 1942. Under the leadership of General Leslie R. Groves and with scientific direction from J. Robert Oppenheimer, the project aimed to develop an atomic bomb. Multiple research facilities were established across the United States, including Los Alamos, Oak Ridge, and Hanford. Then, in December of 1942, physicist Enrico Fermi achieved the first controlled, self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction in a controlled environment known as the Chicago Pile 1. This milestone demonstrated the feasibility of creating a working atomic bomb. The Manhattan Project focused on two primary methods for isotope separation, electromagnetic and gaseous diffusion. These processes were developed to enrich uranium-235, the isotope required for a nuclear chain reaction. On July 16, 1945, the first nuclear test, codenamed Trinity, was conducted in Alamogordo, New Mexico. The test involved the detonation of an implosion-type plutonium bomb, marking the first successful demonstration of the atomic bomb's destructive power. In August 1945, during World War II, the U.S. dropped atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. These bombings resulted in immense destruction, loss of life, and Japan's surrender, effectively ending the war. The development and use of atomic bombs had a profound impact on global politics, the arms race, and the world's perception of warfare. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki also prompted discussions about the ethical and moral implications of nuclear weapons and led to efforts for arms control and non-proliferation. Oppenheimer's Dilemmas Robert Oppenheimer, one of the key scientists involved in the development of the atomic bomb, grappled with moral and ethical dilemmas throughout his involvement in the Manhattan Project. As the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, Oppenheimer was deeply aware of the destructive power of the atomic bomb and the implications it held for humanity. His concerns about the atomic bomb and nuclear proliferation became more pronounced as the project progressed. He recognized the tremendous devastation that atomic weapons could unleash and the potential for catastrophic consequences if they fell into the wrong hands. These moral and ethical battles were exacerbated by his knowledge of the immense destructive of power he was helping create. His concerns led him to have conversations with President Harry Truman about the moral implications of the bomb. Oppenheimer expressed his worries to Truman and argued for international control and the prevention of nuclear weapons proliferation. He believed the U.S. should take a leading role in establishing a system of global cooperation and arms control to prevent a nuclear arms race. He insisted his concerns were increased by the fact that he personally had blood on his hands with the deaths in Japan. Truman apparently replied, the blood is on my hands, let me worry about that. He then booted Oppenheimer out of the Oval Office. Oppenheimer's stance on the bomb and nuclear proliferation clashed with the prevailing sentiment of the time. The start of the Cold War and the growing tensions between the U.S. and Soviet Union made Truman and other policymakers wary of sharing nuclear technology or relinquishing American control over atomic weapons. The prevailing belief was that nuclear weapons served as a deterrent against 
potential adversaries. Oppenheimer's opposition to the development of a hydrogen bomb further strained his relationship with the government. The hydrogen bomb, or thermonuclear bomb, was far more powerful than the atomic bomb, and Oppenheimer questioned the need for such a weapon. He argued that the hydrogen bomb would escalate the arms race and pose an even greater threat to humanity. He believed the focus should be on arms control and preventing the proliferation of nuclear weapons. His opposition to the hydrogen bomb led to his downfall. In 1954, his security clearance was revoked by the Atomic Energy Commission. He was accused of being a security risk based on alleged communist sympathies during the 30s. The accusations against him were largely unfounded and were driven by his opposition to the hydrogen bomb rather than any evidence of disloyalty. Nevertheless, Oppenheimer was effectively blacklisted, and he faced significant professional and personal consequences. The revocation of Oppenheimer's security clearance was a significant loss for the scientific community and a blow to intellectual freedom. Spies for the USSR during the Cold War, several individuals played crucial roles as spies, providing the Soviet Union with valuable nuclear bomb technology and information. John Cairncross was a British civil servant and Soviet agent who worked as a spy during World War II. He provided classified information to the Soviet Union, including details about the Manhattan Project and the development of the atomic bomb. Melita Norwood, a British civil servant, began working for Soviet intelligence in the late 30s. She continued her espionage activities for several decades, passing on classified information about nuclear research and other sensitive technologies to the Soviet Union. Klaus Fuchs was a German-born physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project and later became a spy for the USSR. He provided detailed information about the design and production of nuclear weapons, including the atomic bomb. His actions significantly advanced the Soviet Union's nuclear program. David Greenglass, an American machinist and army soldier, was recruited by his brother-in-law, Julius Rosenberg, to spy for the Soviet Union. He worked at the Los Alamos Laboratory during the Manhattan Project and provided sketches and descriptions of the atomic bomb's design. Russell McNutt was an American physicist who worked on the Manhattan Project and later became a spy for the USSR. He provided technical information on the production of plutonium, crucial for the Soviet Union's nuclear weapons program. Clarence Hiskey, an American scientist and chemical engineer, provided the USSR with information on the production of tritium, a key component in the development of thermonuclear weapons. His actions significantly aided the Soviet Union's pursuit of hydrogen bomb technology. Theodore Hall, an American physicist and member of the Manhattan Project, began spying for the Soviet Union while he was still a student at Harvard. He provided detailed information on the design and production of atomic bombs. And Oskar Seberer, an American physicist, was part of a family network of spies who worked for the Soviet Union. He provided technical information on radar and nuclear weapons, including the design and operation of trigger for atomic bombs. These individuals, among others, played crucial roles in passing classified information and technology to the Soviet Union, allowing them to significantly advance their own nuclear weapons program. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that Robert Oppenheimer helped develop the atomic bomb but was fired and blacklisted after trying to halt nuclear proliferation? Let us know in the comments section below.